G'day, I'm James, and today I'd like to talk about mathematics. What is the impact of mathematics? What is the impact of a mathematics teacher? What does mathematics teach for that matter? All very good questions. And let me come at them by commenting that mathematics has been around for tens of thousands of years. Mathematics is a fundamentally human enterprise invented slash created by humans for humans to be used by humans and to be enjoyed by humans. And as such, every human on this planet should have a wonderful human relationship with mathematics. And there really is evidence that mathematics has been around for tens of thousands of years. Back in 1937, in the region of Czechoslovakia, some archaeologists unearthed a wolf's bone, the arm bone, the radius bone of a wolf, which has some notches on it, which weren't coincidental. There's 55 notches, the first 30 were all on a row like this, and I've lost count already, say 30, and then the remaining 25 appeared in groups of five, like this. And you look at this and think, Oh, oh, you can't help but think something was going on mathematical there. I bet caveman was counting. This was dated 30,000 BCE. This is the time of caveman, and it looks like even back then, humans were counting. Wonderful, they're doing mathematics. Mathematics has been around for a very long time. And you look at this in the morning, you can't help but think more was going on, because it looks like people were counting just off they were going to do their counting, and then suddenly they had an insight that actually maybe counting's easier if you start grouping uh, notches into smaller sets of numbers. And they did. That's an incredible insight. If you go a little bit further, they chose groups of five. You start to wonder, why five? And you think, maybe, maybe because of our human physiology. We see this all the time on our bodies. Five digits on the end of an arm. We think five's a good number for counting. Maybe this cave person did too. Brilliant. Mathematics is full of insights. There's a wonderful insight. And it's all about telling stories, human stories. Mathematics is fundamentally human. Actually, this idea of grouping into five and using our physiology has stayed with us to this day. We now actually uh, think about and work with our numbers not based on one hand and its digits, we actually think two hands and it's all ten digits. We actually follow a base ten number system today. For example, let me write this number on the board, 273, and listen to what I just said, 273. I said 200. 73. And if I visualize what that is, I could draw a little chart where I have, say, the ones, ones, the units. I have the tens because of this, we, our human physiology. And I have the ten tens. Ten tens is a hundred, the hundreds. So when I say a number like 273, I'm literally saying two hundreds, two of these. Seven T. That TY is short for ten in English. So I'm literally saying seven tens, and there they are and three, seven, 273, beautiful. We've just discovered place value, and it's how we, to this day, visualize, think about, and work with our numbers. In fact, we actually work with our numbers this way because it actually makes arithmetic fabulously straightforward and wonderful. For example, take a number like 464 and add to it, say, 223. Great, let's do that. Well, the picture would be something like this. With a wonderful place value in our minds, I would say I have, oh, 464, four hundreds, literally, and 60, six tens, literally, and four ones, there's the four. Please add to it two more hundreds. No worries, two more hundreds. Please add two more tens. Piece of cake, two more tens. Please add three more ones. Love it, there's three more ones. And I can see I've got right now six hundreds, and I've got oh, eight tens, and I've got uh, seven ones. Six hundred and eighty-seven. Six hundreds, eighty, eight tens, and seven. Beautiful place value makes arithmetic straightforward. In fact, just to point out how straightforward it makes it, try doing this work in a system that does not have place value, like Roman numerals. Imagine you were asked to do this only in Roman numerals. 464, he goes 400, that'll be CD 60 LX 4 IV. Please add to that 200 CC and 20 XX and 3 III equals Good luck, good luck. The invention of place value, I think, is one of humankind's greatest, greatest achievements of all time. It is so, so natural, so obvious, so right. We don't think of it as, as remarkable anymore because it's so natural, so right. It is brilliant beyond belief. And every maths teacher on this planet 
teacher's place value. Teach either teaches it directly or teaches how to use it or keeps practicing using place value all throughout the entire curriculum. What an impact on the world that is, the numeracy that comes from understanding place value. But it gets more interesting. Math does more. For example, suppose I want to do, say, a subtraction problem. All right, let's try doing something like 584 take away 131. What would I do? Well, I'd visualize it this way with our wonderful place value system. That is five hundreds and eight tens and four, 584, oops, that's enough. Please take away 100. Oh, I can do that, gone. Please take away three tens, piece of cake, gone. Please take away one, one, gone. Beautiful, and I see I'm left with four hundreds and five tens and three ones. The power of place value. But math teaches more. I've just done the arithmetic, useful, grand, fabulous, but now is an opportunity to learn something profound and deep. Let's try this subtraction problem. It'll be, I don't know, something like 416 take away 132. And then suddenly I see I have a problem. Look at it. I want 400s, 400, there they are, 400. 1t, 110, and 6. 416, there it is. Please take away 100, I will do that. Please take away two units, I can do that. Please take away three ones, I can't do that. I could do, do that column, I can do that column, but this one has given me a problem. I can't take away three, three units from this one. No, no three dots there. Oh my goodness, Houston, we have a problem. And this is the wonderful power of teaching mathematics. We've now got a problem. And I'm actually having an emotional reaction right now to the problem. This actually makes me feel queasy. What am I going to do? Because I am stuck. And that is the human reaction to anything in life. That's a problem. If you've got a challenge in life, you're going to have a human reaction because you are human. If you've got a challenge in mathematics, you are going to have a human reaction because you are human. So be human. In fact, there are two fundamental steps to solving any problem, maths or life. And no one ever talks about them, except me, I'm going to talk about them. Step one, be your honest human self and acknowledge your human reaction. Right now, this makes me feel queasy. I'm feeling queasy, I'll say it out loud. Okay, fair enough, no, fair enough. But step two is to take a deep breath. You heard me take a deep breath and then do something. Do anything, do anything you can do to help you move forward. Wow, and that's the power of teaching mathematics. I'm giving you an opportunity right now to practice having an emotional reaction and getting those emotions in check to move forward nonetheless. So how am I going to move forward here? And I look at this and say, okay, what I really want is more dots here. I, I need to take away three dots. I need more dots in that box and I just don't have them. That's what makes my hands go up. Okay, my hands went up, so what can I do? If I want more dots in there, how can I make that happen? And here's the thing. Mathematics is all about seeing structure and not being shut down by emotions, but I step back and say, okay, what's the deeper structure here that I could use to my advantage? And I realized if I want more dots there, I could actually make it happen. Because after all, think about it. One single dot here is 100. That's 10 tens. I said 10 tens at one point. That dot there is really 10 tens. What if I redraw that dot as it really was? 10 tens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of them. Bingo! Now I've got more dots there. Maybe I can do take away one. Take away one, gone. Now I can take away three, gone. Now I can take away two, gone. I've worked out every column. I now have two here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight there, and four there. The answer must be 284. Whoa, there it is. And this is the other beautiful thing about mathematics. It actually teaches the gift of being your human self, having your human reactions, and taking a deep breath and moving forward nonetheless. So many people shut down because of their emotions when faced with a problem. What a gift to the world if we can teach the world how to be their human selves, take a deep breath and do something nonetheless. That's a great gift to humanity. That is one of the greatest impacts of mathematics and mathematics teaching. Teachers provide these opportunities all the time to practice being your fabulous human self and moving forward. What a gift to humanity. Now, no matter which topic in mathematics you might be studying, be it arithmetic like we've been doing, or maybe spatial reasoning, geometry, or statistics, or algebra, or calculus, whatever it is, you're actually examining a very complex system and practicing the art of stepping back from it, having a meta look at what's going on, and really asking yourself, oh, can I see my way through that complexity and ask and examine 
What's really going on? What's the simplicity at the heart of this that makes it, makes it all work the way it does? And to do that actually requires a lot of insights. So practicing this art form right now is actually practicing the setting the stage so you have insights, which is a great life skill. And of course, there's going to be problems and challenges along the way. And you, being a fabulous human being, are going to have honest human reactions to those. Great, you're having a human relationship with mathematics, as you should. But the wonderful thing here is that you're practicing also keeping those emotions in check. Acknowledge those emotions, absolutely, be human. But take a deep breath and realize that you can always do something, anything, anything to move forward. Mathematics teaches you the confidence to always do something to try to move forward. And that is a great gift in life. That is agency, and mathematics teaches agency. Okay, so here's the secret. Many people feel that a mathematics curriculum should be full of examples that show that mathematics is relevant for real life thinking and work. Okay, I mean, th that's fine. In fact, so much of mathematics really was motivated by humans, real humans, having human problems and wanting to solve them. That's motivated a lot of mathematics. So yes, let's tell those stories. Why did humans want to do this maths in the first place? Absolutely all for that. But with the claim that's actually going to be relevant for your life and your problems, I'm afraid to say all bets are off. I mean, no curriculum writer can predict what your problems are going to be in your work, in your life, in your thinking. Sadly, it's just a reality. So what's the point here? Well, the fact is, if you've been studying mathematics, you've actually studied systems like algebra and trigonometry and statistics and arithmetic and so forth. You've actually practiced stepping back from a complex situation and honing in through all that clutter to look for simplicity and ways to move forward within that simplicity. That you've also practiced being an honest human self, have your human relationship with the topic, maybe be scared, be excited, whatever the emotion is, keeping that emotion in check and still having the confidence to move forward nonetheless. Mathematics, no matter what it is, will teach you the ability to move forward despite the complexity and despite the emotions that might be with, them, with that as well. That is wonderful. And every now and then, maybe actual algebra, actual trigonometry, or actual arithmetic will help you with that, 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 that task at hand. The tools there can actually be helpful in their own right. But you know, who knows? Who knows? So my point is that the content of mathematics is not actually the point of mathematics classes, actually. Really, the content is a vehicle for teaching fabulous thinking and teaching the confidence and the agency to be an empowered human being on this planet. And to that I have to say, whoa, that is the impact of mathematics.